Well, it's a big day for Boise State basketball, so we figured we'd uh, do double the coverage here today. We had our big announcement with Jay Tust earlier this morning and had him on to talk about this game. But uh, with the schedules and kind of the off week, we figured we'd save the Matt Boucher show this week for Friday. We got a lot going on. We got uh, the big game tonight with UNLV. We got Colorado State on Sunday. Matt, I know you've been uh, busy selling homes there with Boucher Real Estate, but you did get to sneak out and see the GOAT LeBron James play the other night against the Trailblazers. So you saw your basketball this week, but what's going on, man? I got spoiled. We went there for 12 hours. I got to have pregame meal with Scotty Brooks, you know, NBA former coach, former head coach, and got to go into the players' entrance, felt, felt spoiled, and the Blazers beat the Lakers. And uh, back here Thursday morning, ready for a big game tonight. Should be a lot of fun, man. And, uh, you know, we still haven't technically done a show after a loss because they did win on Saturday against uh, San Jose State and kind of got back on track a little bit. And and now they had some time to kind of rest up a little bit. And, and obviously this is a big stretch starting tonight with uh, UNLV. I know 9 p.m. It's a little later than some fans would have liked, but uh, you got nine, UNLV tonight, Colorado State Sunday. I mean, 48 hours from now, Matt, we could be, you know, I guess, you know, 40, you know, 50 hours, whatever. But by Sunday afternoon – it could be a whole different feeling whether they can uh, take care of business with both these games or if they have a, you know, a slip up here at home. So what do you make, I guess, in general, just of the, the next couple of games here at home? This is a big weekend. Tonight's going to be tough. I mean, UNLV, the running rebels, they're, they're no joke. They're 10 and 14. You know, they just smacked Colorado state at Colorado state. I mean, Bryce Hamilton had 45 points. I mean, 45 points in a college game. That is that's unfathomable. And he's coming tonight. He's averaging over 21 a game. I mean, him and Donovan Williams, Donovan shoots 50% from three on the road. And Bryce is at 49% on the road from three. I mean, these numbers are just, I, you know, job dropping. We're going to have to defend them. I mean, the other guys definitely aren't, aren't um, as, uh, you know, offensive threats, but if you let him get going, it's going to be, it's going to be trouble. So we got our hands full and we got to guard him good. Last seven games, Bryce Hamilton has had four 30-point games. So he's scored at least 30 points four of the last seven games. You mentioned the 45 back on the 28th of January at Colorado State. And that's all you need to know. I mean, Leon Rice uh, was asked yesterday, I said something about uh, UNLV or Bryce, you know, Bryce Hamilton, what's, what's your thoughts? And he said, well, just ask Colorado State. Uh, about uh, UNLV because they went to Fort Collins when UNLV was ranked, I believe, 20 or when uh, Colorado right. State was ranked uh, 22nd, I believe, and and uh, blew them out. The final score was 14, but it was actually even worse than that for most of the game. So they come in here uh, kind of trying to play spoiler. Uh, you know, they're in sixth place in the conference. They can't really win it, but they got some guys that love to get their shots off. I mean, uh, Hamilton shoots about takes about 20 attempts a game, so he's going to get his shot attempts. Um, and those are kind of scary teams, Matt, where they've got some talent and they kind of got nothing to lose at this point, but to let it fly. And you got a bright green light. I mean, he misses four in a row. He doesn't carry shooting the fifth one. He's kind of a college version of a James Harden. You know, he's a lefty, he's shifty. He does a step back for fans that, you know, nine o'clock is not past their bedtime. They're going to see one of the best scorers in the country tonight. Here's uh, Leon Rice uh, yesterday talking about uh, first UNLV's team and then Bryce Hamilton. Past has nothing to do with this next game. Nothing. No. Well, if I play the right clip, from what here, I've we'll seen, see. here we go. They've really grown as the way they move the ball uh, as the season's gone on, and they have a pretty clear understanding of their roles. They um, uh, they have great scores, not just Bryce, but guys that can really, really shoot, and you know, guys that are sell. I think the biggest thing that I've seen is probably their their guys are settling into their roles. And that, that's the key to a team is, is guys know what their roles are. And it looks like they're really starting to figure those out. Well, he got going, man, he did. He got going in that second one. And, you know, you, a great score like him, you're not going to shut him out. And especially, you know, it's one thing to try for 40 minutes, but the way, when I look back on, that's the crazy thing. It just seems like so long ago, we were playing those back to backers. That, that was crazy. I mean, with no fans back to, I mean, Lord sakes, knock on wood. I, I never want to go through that again after watching that. And, um, but uh, it's like I said, you can't, you can keep a score down for minutes here and there, but to think that you're going to shut out a score like that. Uh, and when you're talking about 80 minutes, not going to happen. 
Well, there he is, Leon Rice, uh, yeah. talking about uh, Hamilton. And, yeah, he's going to get his 20 shots a game. And, and you know, he, you're not going to hold him to four points or something. You just want to hold him to, you know, 12 instead of 25, right? It's the type of shots. You know, we got big guards. I don't know if Shaver will start on him or Acott now has had some Well, we got a question stuff. from Derek here wanting to know who's guarding Hamilton if Acott can't go. And uh, he Acott, says he assume, right? assumes it's Acott if he's healthy. And we are – there's a little uncertainty there. You know, Leon playing a little gamesmanship yesterday saying we don't know yet. But I, I personally would be pretty surprised if Acott did not play tonight. I think he could have played Saturday if it was a different opponent personally. Um, in warm-ups, he looked okay. But – uh, the good thing is, is you can put multiple people on him. Shaver's quick, tough as nails, smaller, you know, but ACOT's bigger, stronger, a big defender, can really affect shots, you know, vertically. What you don't want him is, is to get easy buckets or have him blow by you, or reject screens, and he gets into the paint where he gets other guys going on assists because you have to stop him. Then the whole team's vibing. If he's taking step back threes with a hand in his face, hitting shots, he's getting his, he's having to earn it, and the other guys have no rhythm. What do you make of uh, on the Boise State side what they need to do to get going and, and maybe in particular to get Milad and Armouche going? Obviously, the big guy's been struggling of late, mostly due to foul trouble. He just can't stay on the court. But the last five games, he's still at 19 fouls committed and only 17 points. So uh, never a good ratio for, for one game, let alone you know four or five game stretch where you have committed more fouls and you're scoring points. And, man, I don't think they need him to score 15 you know, points a game. They just need him to rebound. They need him to defend. They need him on the court. I mean, he's, you know, a guy that has two games this year where he has at least 10 offensive rebounds by himself. And we talk about that game at Utah State where he had 22 and 19. But Boise State's such a good rebounding team and they're such a good defensive team because of Milad and Armouche and not giving up second chance points to the other team and not, um, you know, allowing, uh, you know, silly offensive rebounds that lead to extra possessions and things. So he's such a good rebounder and in the paint, he's such a good defender. Uh, I, you know, you, I, the offense isn't as big a deal to me, but you just need you need him on the court. And that's, again, five games now where he's really given you pretty much nothing. How, how do they get the big man going, and can that happen? Three things I think Armus can do. On, on defensive land, uh, side, it's it's pretty obvious. He's amazing. He's a beast. He's a wrecking. He blocks shots. He rebounds. You know, people earn it when he's out of foul trouble. On the offensive end, offensive rebounds, putbacks, he's going to get a lot of buckets. And I like him in the pick and roll instead of popping, really going to the lane where you bounce pass – all he has to do is catch and dunk or catch and finish. He doesn't have to have a bunch of guards with, you know, trying to use his right or his left or short corner, you know, where he kind of dives behind the defense and he can finish at the rim very, very well. We need to put him in spots, you know, where he can be successful in those instead of back to the basket against a 6'10 guy and hope his left hook goes in. Here's uh, Coach Rice talking about Milad and Armouche. Um, it's a confidence thing too. And, and sometimes it's matchups, sometimes it's, but it's a confidence. Let's let's get his uh, offense. He, his defense is always consistent. Yeah, he's been whistled for too many fouls that, you know, we try to help him watch and film and see how he can guard without fouling just a little bit better. Or, you know, some of them have been tricky calls and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, again, I want our guys down the stretch here playing with the most confidence they've ever, you know, their most confident self, the most confident group that we've ever had. And that's how I want them playing down the stretch, not just him, everybody. Well, confidence, I know, is a big thing, Matt. But, uh, again, it's it's some of the fouls have been kind of uh, ticky-tack. And I know, um, you know, some of the calls on Armouche, the back-to-back fouls, I believe, in the Wyoming game a couple weeks ago, uh, you had a good view for that. Uh, I think two fouls in five seconds. And he's had some of you know, the other Wyoming game, you know, um, it just seems like for whatever reason he's been snake bit and, and but I don't think this team can do what they want to do if, if he's not out there playing, you know, 30 minutes a game. And I think, I mean, confidence is definitely, you know, when you have a couple bad games and you're 18 to 22 years old, you start lacking confidence, but we have every reason to be confident. We've won 15 out of 16 games. We're nine and one in conference. Uh, we have every reason to be confident and they're going to come in confident tonight. They want to take out the top team. They've won three out of four or four out of five, whatever the number is they're rolling um and tonight's going to be a dog fight i really hope the fans show up tonight for the top place team in the mountain west with vegas coming into town what, what yeah we were talking about this before and somebody asked me what kind of crowd do we think they're going to get tonight 9 p.m i mean if you got kids i guess it's not an ideal time but otherwise you go out to dinner you have some drinks you you have a good time and you come over around 8 8 30 and you, you're in a perfect mood for a game like this i i i 
I hope they show up too. You had so much momentum from the San Jose State game where the third deck was open. I know they did a lot of promotions with schools and things like that, so it was a lot of kids. But um, it just makes a big difference when that third deck's open. And, and this is a huge game. You lose this game, and all of a sudden you got Colorado State on Sunday. I mean, this is not a uh, gimme game by any means. This isn't San Jose State. This is a team that can beat you. Again, they just won at Colorado State you know, 12 days ago, whatever it was. And they've got, you know, a couple, you know, the, the leading scorer in the league is all you need to know in, in Bryce Hamilton. So um, what is your expectation or hope or your plea to the fans to get out there tonight? Every game is huge. I mean, we only have five home games left the rest of the year, three on the road, five at home, and then it's done. You're not going to see a lot of these guys ever again. I mean, hijab has gone. He can't come back. He has no, he, he's given everything. He has no eligibility left. So my, message to the crowd was please show up we're a couple bounces away after these two games from being potentially 11 and 1 or 9 and 3 and 9 and 3 we'd be in third place if we lose to Colorado State on Sunday so uh every possession is huge the fans matter you know the difference between 6,000 fans and 9,000 fans is a lot a lot for the players a lot for uh you know momentum and that kind of thing yeah I, I envision this being a game that's you know, maybe a five point game at the half or a close game and it's going to be midway through the second half and they're going to need to hit a big bucket or get take a big charge and get that crowd into them. I, I would be shocked if this was a uh, easy, you know, 15, 20 point win the whole game. I, I think this is going to be a back and forth game. It may be a tie game with six minutes left. I mean, they're going to need to make some plays late and, you know, as good as anybody as someone that's played in that arena, the crowd truly does make a difference, right? Oh, there's no question. I mean, there is no question how much home home court advantage matters in college basketball. I mean, it's there's no secret. It is a difference maker. Well, we've seen it. You and me both uh, have been on yeah. the road this year, and you you know uh, you were in uh, Laramie and Logan, two of the better fan bases, and we saw in that uh, you know Wyoming game that we were at, and then the Wyoming Colorado State game, or uh, I guess it was the Wyoming Utah State game earlier this week. How many foul calls the home team seems to get with the crowd and everything? I mean. You see some of these other venues, Matt, and they get huge home court advantages, not just from the fans, but from the officiating. And that stuff matters when you have a loud crowd, right? Oh, yeah. And I mean, from the college level, the pro level, I thought what I was blown away at the Portland venue is Portland, who's struggling mightily. The fans were loud. I mean, every, the video guy, you know, from every bad call, immediately the replay would go up. If there was a bad call against the Lakers, they wouldn't even show the replay. I mean, they were so – and. They got calls down the stretch. LeBron, I think, shot one free throw. And I know we're comparing pro to college, but college, it even matters more. Someone's asking you here, Jordan, or uh, Matt. Jordan is asking, where are the best seats in the house for the rowdy fans to sit? Because uh, him and his friend keep having people move away from them because they're being too loud. Or if, if fans are moving away from him because he's being too loud and cheering too much, what should he do? That's a great question, Jordan. If you know the answer, let me know. I would say probably the student section behind the hoop on the visitors or, you know, somewhere next to the visitors bench would be good. Uh, let them Sounds like it. he's trying to wedge his way in to sit down there by you. I think he's saying you got any extra seats for me or something. And so what I, what I took from that. I have to be on my best behavior now, so somebody else needs to get rowdy. <laughs> well, you can still have a good time and be loud. You just can't direct it towards the, the three men wearing stripes uh, on the court tonight, and, and maybe one in particular that I'm sure we'll see at some point again at Extra Mile Arena. But uh, well, And then Sunday, the quick turnaround to Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday, the game's at 2 o'clock as well, and depending on what happens tonight, you're either – having to win to, to try to, you know, salvage a one in one homestand and avoid a losing streak, or you have a chance to lay the hammer down and, and, and put Colorado state another game behind you and, and keep that uh, pace, you know, atop the mountain West standing Sunday's a big game too. going to need the fans there. And what the fans don't know is the league and, and Fox sports almost had us play an 8 PM game. They assigned yep. that to us. Boise state stood up and said, no, we're not playing an 8 PM game after a four hour Super Bowl." We would have got very few fans. They fought for it, and they got that game changed to two where there will still be plenty of time. The 11 Bengal fans in the Treasure Valley will have plenty of time when the game's over to go get your popcorn and drinks and make whatever and get to there you know, well before the kickoff for the football game. So 2 o'clock on a Sunday against an 18-3 and Colorado State team who's right behind us in the standings. I hope the fans show up. Yeah, and uh, yeah, 11 might be generous too. But uh, for whatever reason, I keep hearing that as an excuse for Sunday. We'll see. One more quick quote from Leon Rice. And and Matt, I want to ask you about the quote after you, after this. But, you know, what they've done is great. They're 9-1. and one, They're, what, you know, 18-5. and five. They've had a great start. But none of that really matters at this point. It, it's what it, these, these final eight conference games are going to decide whether they're an NIT team 
or an NCAA tournament team, and Leon Rice is trying to stress that to his group. Past has nothing to do with this next game. Nothing, nothing to do with it. Uh, we, you know, we battled our tails off, and we've competed, and uh, we've won some. We've won a bunch of close games, and have been really, really good. And the, but that, do we get to start up ten zero or twenty zero because of that? No, they don't. It's not like the golf tournament or whatever that they, yeah, you're, you have a 10 stroke lead because of what you did in the preseason. No, not at all. And, and that's what we've been so good at is just, we got one game right now and it's against a really, really good team, a really hot team, a team that's, you know, made so much progress and, you know, credit to uh, coach Kruger and, and his staff of what they're doing and the credit to those players there. <laughs> They're good, really good. And uh, so, but I think we've been really good, and it's going to be two terrific teams battling in at late night in Extra Mile Arena. So hopefully we'll have a great crowd because we, we need this crowd to get us through it. And Matt, as we kind of wrap this thing up, I mean, uh, you, you know, we've talked about it, but uh, there's just some fans out there, the narrative, whatever. I mean, it's, it's well documented. This team hasn't exactly had the best, you know, stretch runs or marches when they've been on the cusp of the tournament before. And unfortunately it's been the other way, but they're, they're right there. Now they're so close. You just have to take care of games like tonight. These are the swing games that make such a difference in terms of going to the NCAA tournament and potentially getting a, a decent seed in the tournament. But all of a sudden you lose three out of four and you're back on the bubble. I mean, the, the, the margin for error is so small. And so, yes, they did a great job getting themselves in this position, but you got to block that out. Right. And it's what happens in these final eight games. And we have the toughest schedule in the Mountain West. The two teams we don't play is San Jose State and New Mexico State. Now, Wyoming, you know, would love to – I mean, I would love to switch with Wyoming's schedule. It is what it is. But at games like tonight, you have to win at home. And the teams we have remaining, I mean, UNLV, Utah State still, San Diego State still, at Colorado, at Colorado State, home of Colorado State. I mean, it's going to be tough. I mean, this league is so good. I mean, they, they're projecting it, you know, six teams in the top 55. The ACC can't say that. So every game's huge. It's going to be a dogfight. I'm, I'm just glad our team is very mature. They know, you know, stay calm and, and take care of business. They're not looking forward to March like everybody you know else is, and they're dialed in. Well, four out of the next five games are at home, so uh, that starts tonight with UNLV 9 p.m. tip-off Extra Mile Arena, and then Sunday 2 o'clock um, at Extra Mile Arena against Colorado State. And then you got the quick midweek road game, kind of a tricky, sneaky, tough game that we'll talk about next week at Air Force. And then you come home for another huge uh, couple of games, Utah State next Saturday, San Diego State. Those are the two games where there will be literally no excuses, Matt. Utah State at 4 p.m. on a Saturday, and then Tuesday at 7 against San Diego State. If the, if the third deck's not full for those games, then we can seriously – turn this show on and go on a rant excuses excuse, i mean <laughs> i didn't go to the gym today because it was cold outside no the gym's inside where it's heated like there's gonna be excuses you know uh there's a lot of people in the treasure valley and there's no excuse for not having a great crowd and great support and the ones that are there they're amazing they're loud and they make up for the ones that don't show up should be a lot of fun tonight. 9 p.m. tip off Extra Mile Arena. We'll we'll see you there, Matt. Uh, looking forward to it. Should be a lot of fun, and and we'll be back uh, to get your thoughts next week as uh, we break down these two games and get ready for that uh, Air Force game as well. But uh, appreciate it, man. Always a pleasure, and we'll be uh, checking you out. And hopefully, if folks, we always say it, but uh, looking to buy that buy or sell that next home. Hopefully, they'll check out BoucherRealEstate.com, man. We appreciate it. Thank you, BJ. See you tonight. Yep. There he is. Take care, Matt Boucher, Boucher Real Estate. Again, 9 p.m. tip.